Hi everybody, I'm Sarah, the Real Simple Mama, <laughs> and we are here to show you how we are going to do a deep clean of the chicken coop. I've done some short videos about this, but this is going to be a segmented video that goes a little bit more into detail on the cleaning, the deep cleaning that we do of our little chicken coop kit about twice a year. So here we go. Alright, I have my supplies out and hopefully I'm going to have some assistance <laughs> from the kids after school with this. And real briefly, the reason we're going to do a deep clean out of the coop is just over time, we have a couple of different things going on. With the change of the seasons, you might be more prone to have problems with things like poultry lice or mites or worms um, that can either be coming from the ground as it's wet or from wild birds bringing disease in. Also over time, if you are like me and you use, in my nesting box, I'm using pine, which you can see right there. Over time, it gets, you know, it gets broken down. The pieces aren't as fluffy anymore. It gets compacted. And then the PDZ, which is what I have under my roosts, over time, just like cat litter, every once in a while, you know, there's some little there's a whole bunch of like old droppings in there and stuff that's just little tiny pieces that we can't really get out. So what we're going to do is not only for the health of the birds, but also to make the coop smelling nice, make it fresh and clean. I do this when the weather changes, which for us here in Texas, I'm talking when we're going from summer into autumn and right now we're in mid-October. And then I'll do it again when the winter and the early spring are over. So when we really start to see differences in temperature. And again, that's to help combat any of the mites, lice, the other jerks that we might have to be dealing with. And it'll be good as the girls start their egg production back up in the spring when it gets warmer. So what you're going to want to do is obviously have trash cans and trash bags. You can, depending on your materials, you can have gloves. I normally don't use it, but I'll use a small cup to help me scoop stuff out. And so the first step is the least fun for that, I apologize. But what you're going to do during the day, not while your girls are cooped up, not while your flock is in there in bed, but during the day, you're gonna have as much ventilation out and open as possible. You're gonna get all of the old material out. If you want to be really thorough, I also recommend that you disassemble your coop to a certain extent. Obviously don't take the whole thing down, but I mean, take the roost bars out so you can spray them down. Um, if they have dried droppings on them and it's not a material that you can get wet, for example, this wood has not been, water well, actually it has been water sealed, but if you hadn't sealed it, you, know, you don't wanna necessarily spray it with the hose. So get a dry brush those scrub brushes like you see uh, I get them at the dollar store you guys know how much I love Dollar Tree and what I would do is use those and scrape all that off you can see all of this I don't even know how this happened <laughs> It's like, what are you guys doing in there? Um, so I'm going to be brushing all of that off, cleaning all of that out. And I will say just for precautionary, because again, not only are we doing this for cosmetic reasons and so that it smells nice and, you know, we have all nice clean bedding, but also just in case you suspect that there's mites or lice or whatever, I tie up the trash bags and I take them out to the garbage can. This is not an opportunity for me to be composting the old pine or trying to do anything with it or keeping it close to my flock. Does that make sense? Just in case there was something in there or in case you're finding this video when you know you've got a confirmed case of, we're also talking like stick tight fleas, which are disgusting. Or if your girls have a disease like foul pox or something like that and you're wanting to clean everything out. This is not, I'm gonna take this stuff out but I'm still gonna put it close to my flock. That doesn't make any sense. So tie it up, close it up, put it away so that there's no possible way that any kind of mite or flea or anything can get back in where your girls are. So the first step is we're going to take out all of the PDZ, we're going to take out all of the nesting pine, and then we're going to do some dry scrubbing here. And then we'll get to kind of get into the nooks and crannies a little bit. We'll get to spray it down and clean it, and we'll get to put in new bedding. Real quick, if you are interested in using a spray, which I feel kind of like if you're cleaning everything out, I mean, you might as well, right? And then just let it air dry and put your supplies in. Cleaning out your coop, if you've got a small coop kit like me, it will easily, the whole thing will take easily less than an hour. 
but I would suggest that you make some kind of spray or use, we've, we've joked on other videos in the comments, right, about using a leaf blower or something. If you're taking all of the material out anyway, I would go ahead and really clean the nooks and crannies. Um, if we're talking some of the different kinds of pests that can be living on your birds and be a problem, sometimes they can live dormant depending on what we're talking about. Some of them have to be living on, like if it's a louse, it has to live on the body of your bird. Um, but some of the types of mites and stuff, they can live dormant in these nooks and crannies for days and days and days just waiting for a bird to hop on so I would use either a can of compressed air or a leaf blower or something and just blow the heck out of everything we're talking little corners and crannies of every single 90 degree angle you can think of right I'm not worried about spider webs spiders anything like that they're not a problem flies are annoying but they're not really a danger so we're talking more about those teeny tiny little guys that live under the feathers of your birds the other thing is, if you want to use a spray afterwards, so I would say, you know, step one is take out all the old material and then, you know, use a dry brush on things like roost bars and doors. Step two would ble blow anything out with, like I said, leaf blower, compressed air can, whatever. Step three would be spray if you're going to spray or I'm also talking dusting, spraying and or dusting. By spraying, you could do a couple of different things. You can either make a solution, and again, this is just killing the possibility that there was anything in there, living in there, that could be a problem. You could do a bleach and water mixture, white vinegar and water, Dawn or dish soap and vinegar and water. Sorry, we're talking all of these being mixed with water, right? Uh, I have a deodorizing spray that I use on a regular basis. It's white vinegar and water and then a couple of different essential oils. That's not going to be super powerful in killing things, but it smells nice, so it's good to have around, but it's not really strong enough to do the trick as far as, you know, we're talking about like killing anything that might be a problem. So I would spray and then you need to let it air dry. So open up all your little doors. Remember, you can add cheap little hooks if you want so the doors aren't like you know banging around and stuff and then when everything's dry then we're going to put the new bedding in which the girls love and they think it's so fun and this ladies and gentlemen <laughs> is a pan or a tray on the ground as you can see we've got the ratios of the pan to the trash can so we're gonna get this stuff all narrowed down with the dustpan but also i just made this video because i have to show you my socks chicken socks all right, so I wanted to show you if you have a coop kit or if otherwise you've designed your coop so that it has a tray under the roost bars, I wanted to show you that we do have some areas where the PDZ has gotten stuck on it, but with my beloved Dollar Tree, with a dry brush, we are getting all of it to come off. It'll take a little bit of elbow grease, but it will come off. But what I was going to point out is that this tray has absolutely no corrosion and no real damage on it because the same water sealant that we put on all of the exterior, we also sprayed onto this tray. So just another reinforcement or another example of how you can seal some of the interior pieces. Like I said, you can also seal the roost bars just so if it's anything that might get chicken poop on it in particular, that way it's a lot easier for you to clean and it doesn't have the ammonia of the chicken poop over time eating at the material itself. So we just wanted to show you also this tray, like for reference, that's the size of my hand. Like this is a gigantic tray, it's ridiculous. So what we're gonna do now is all of the old material is out. And what we're gonna do is put the tray back in and move all the tiny little, you know, anything that we don't want blown around. Because like I said, we have that little storage compartment right there. And then I'm gonna get out of the way and we're gonna use, we are actually gonna use a leaf blower to blow everything out. And then setting everything back up will honestly be a lot faster because we're just gonna do the poultry dust, we're gonna do a spray down, and then we just dump new material in. So everything is cleaned out. I have dusted and sprayed. As far as if you want to use diatomaceous earth or poultry dust or neither, I have videos about that. I also, if you haven't seen the videos about which supplies or materials I use in the chicken coop, you can see which ones I use and why. 
but everything's nice and clean now, as you can see. I need to go buy another bag of PDZ, we're out. But now everything smells fresh. Yeah, baby, I'll come check. You can do more. My little tiny is, she loves doing the pine, so she's making it all nice for the girls. But everything is nice and clean. And of course, whenever you move a chicken coop, you need to do this, but we're doing it because the weather is changing and because tomorrow we're hoping to get our three new chickens. So everything will be nice and clean. So we're gonna finish topping off with all, that's right. We're gonna finish topping off with all the new material now that the spray has dried and the dust has settled. But now we have a nice, fresh, clean chicken coop. Finally, like I said, I recommend doing this about once every six months. I have a coop kit, obviously, and I have a small flock. So if you have a large flock, or maybe if you're more conservative in that you keep them locked up when it's raining or when it's too hot or too cold, hold on, then you may want to do it more often. Finally, like I said, I wouldn't keep any of this material just in case you have any kind of pest or parasite. I would tie that up and take it out to the trash. Don't keep it anywhere close by. But now we have deep cleaned our coop. Our girls are going to love it. Can you say bye? Thanks for watching. Bye.